In this problem, we're told a centrifuge accelerates uniformly from rest to 1500 RPM in 220 seconds. Through how many revolutions did it turn in this time? So in order to solve this problem, let's go ahead and write down what we're given first. So given, so what are we told? So we're told the centrifuge is going to accelerate uniformly from rest. So the initial angular velocity, uh, right, is going to be equal to zero, right? So zero, and I'm going to keep it in the same units, so zero RPM. So that's going to be the initial angular velocity, and then it's going to go from zero to 15,000. So the angular velocity is going to be 15,000, or the final, 15,000 RPM. And then the time this is going to take is 220 seconds. Right, and so we're trying to find how many revolutions did it turn in this time. And so essentially what they're asking for is theta. So we're trying to solve for theta uh, because theta is just the number of revolutions essentially. And so how do we solve this? So in order to solve this, what we're going to do is use um, the, they're like kinematic equations, but essentially they work for um, angular, right? So rotating. And so essentially we're going to use those equations. They're basically just the normal kinematic equations replaced with the angular or rotational uh, variables. So the equation we're going to use to solve this is this one right here, which is theta minus theta sub zero is equal to one half times omega sub zero plus omega times t. So this is the equation we're going to use. And what you should notice here is, or the reason why we're using this one is because we have all these variables. We have t, we have um, initial angular velocity and final. So all we have to do is plug it in. So uh, Theta sub zero is just going to be zero because it starts, right? It doesn't have any angle when it turns or in the beginning. So it's really just going to be theta equals one half times. And then when we do this, keep in mind, uh, right? This is just zero. The initial angular velocity is zero. So this is zero plus. And then when we do this, keep in mind what this is going to be. And we're solving for revolutions. So if you notice how we write this, if we say 15,000, and then let's write the units, revolutions per minute right? But then we're going to be multiplying by seconds. And so if we multiply by seconds, 220 seconds, what you should notice is that the minute can't cancel with seconds, right? Because what we need is this to be seconds so it can cancel with this and then it just is revolutions. So what we have to do is first convert this into um, revolutions per second. So how do we do that? So 15,000 revolutions per minute we know is Essentially, all we got to do is multiply it or divide it by 60 because there's one minute for every 60 seconds, right? And that would cancel and we just get 15,000 over 60. So if you go ahead and do that, 15,000 over 60 is 250. So this is just going to be 250 revolutions per second. And now we've got it like this. What we can do is actually plug it in. So it's going to be equal to one half times 250 plus zero, which is just 250 revolutions per second multiplied by 220 seconds. So now you'll notice that those cancel. And then we just have to do 250 times 220. And if you do that, you're going to get 55,000. And then multiply that by one half. So if you go ahead and do this, you're going to get, if you do 55,000 times one half, you're going to get 27,500. So this is going to be the number of revolutions. So 27,500 revolutions. Uh, what you can do is just round this though. So I'm just gonna round it to 28,000 and then put it in scientific notation. So one, two, three, four. So 2.8 times 10 to the four revolutions, right? So 2.8 times 10 to the four revolutions. Uh, whatever your teacher wants you to do, if they want the more exact version versus uh, this, the rounded version, make sure you do what your teacher wants. But yeah, essentially that's gonna be how you solve this problem. And hopefully you found this useful.